The following program examines the everyday issues associated with feeding and supporting an army in the 18th century, as evidenced by listings in the newspaper, the Newport Gazette. Newport is strategically located between Boston and New York City. We will zoom into that area. Newport, Rhode Island was occupied by His Majesty's forces from December 1776 through October 1779. The Newport Gazette was a loyalist newspaper printed in Newport, Rhode Island during this British occupation. In December 1776, the British under General Robert Pigott arrive in Newport, Rhode Island. Pigott would serve as commander of His Majesty's forces at Rhode Island, and this command would later turn over to Richard Prescott. Over 6,000 Redcoats and Hessians were garrisoned at Newport and the surrounding area for three years. Large garrisons require large amounts of supply and provision. Before the arrival of the British, the local newspaper, the Newport Mercury, was pro-patriot. This paper was founded in 1727 by Benjamin Franklin's older brother, James. The editor of the Newport Mercury fled town upon the arrival of the British. However, the British discovered and used the local press to publish the Newport Gazette. So for nearly three years, the British control this important New England port. The Newport Gazette, published during occupation, is the source of the primary documents to follow. This 1777 map of Newport shows the city at the time of British occupation. North shows pointing to the left, so we will rotate the map so that north is pointing upwards. Goat Island is outlined here in yellow, and Fort George is outlined here in green. An interesting feature of Colonial Rhode Island is the presence of a Jewish community. A synagogue is identified here at the corner of Griffin and Bull Streets. The map also shows a number of windmills on the landscape outside of the city, identifying the industrial capacity of the city. At a windmill, grain is being crushed into flour meal, the 18th century version of an automated factory. The brick market houses on Thames Street are mentioned as places where provisions were collected for the garrison. A powder magazine is visible northeast of town here. Newport is a solid position for the British garrison. It is a coastal city between Patriot-held Boston and British New York. Its position here protected the British stronghold at New York City. The presence of numerous flour mills is also important. Thousands of soldiers are present and they need food provisions. In June 1777, Major General Richard Prescott stated that it had become a necessity to set maximum prices on provisions sold to soldiers, as food prices were, in General Prescott's opinion, exorbitant. Beef, pork, and mutton were not to exceed seven pence sterling per pound. Lamb and veal were not to exceed eight pence sterling per pound. This price listing shows that soldiers were also purchasing sheep's head and lamb's head, as well as the pluck or organs of these animals. On Main Street, a shop located directly facing the Quartermaster General's building sold imported goods. These goods included sherry, brandy, powdered sugar, walnuts, olives, anchovies, lavender, rice, black pepper, nutmegs, West India rum, and a soldier's necessity, playing cards. We can see how the presence of a large garrison changes the local economy. While many merchants left Newport after the King's troops arrived, there are new merchant opportunities for the local Rhode Island communities. In September 1777, the Newport Gazette lists that Jacob Isaacs on Broad Street, which runs along several mills here, provides a quantity of good flour as well as cheese, Irish pork, molasses, and salt disposed of at the most reasonable rates. In September 1777, the Newport Gazette posts that farmers are requested to send in their oats and straw to the forage magazines as soon as possible. The British Army will pay these farmers two shillings for a bushel of oats and one shilling and four pence for straw. The paper urges farmers to bring in their hay, oats, barley, and straw to the magazines. Before the end of this month, 
so as the magazines may be completed before the roads are bad. Farmers who don't have wagons or horses to cart in their foodstuffs can apply to the Commissary of Forage so that horse teams will be provided for them. However, General Piggott in that same September of 1777 detected something afoul. He stated, The rebels are frequently supplied with rum and salt by its being sent from hence to Block Island and Connecticut. General Piggott declared that whoever shall be detected and found guilty of such malpractices shall be severely punished and his property confiscated. In January 1778, William Clowett advertised his new tavern for His Majesty's troops and sailors, recently opened on Main Street with all the necessary accommodations. At the same time, Stephen Cook, the barrack master in Newport, published that farmers are hereby requested to thresh their grain and send in the straw dry to the barrack master at the same barrack office in Newport where they will be paid the same price for it as given by the commissars. Likewise, another listing in January 1778 asked farmers to send whatever corn, bailey, and oats they could spare to the forage magazine for His Majesty's troops. The garrison would pay for these articles, as well as a quarter of a dollar per ton for every mile that they were transported to the magazine. So the king's troops would not only compensate the farmers for the foodstuffs that they provided, but they would also reimburse the farmers for the mileage. The New England winter provided marketing opportunities for local textile sellers. Stephen Dubois sold blankets, duffels, flannels, beaver hats, and other clothing goods in his new store during the winter of 1778. Samuel Goldberry advertised London-made hats and shoes in his store. Mr. Coddington on Main Street also sold London imports of woolens, linens, coats, and other goods. In April 1778, the Newport Gazette announced that headquarters was regulating the prices of these distinctively New England foods. Codfish was not to exceed one penny half penny per pound. Halibut was set at one penny per pound. The listings included prices for boiled lobster, live lobster, eels, bluefish, flounder, and mackerel, showing that British redcoats were eating foods in 1778 that are very similar to foods that New Englanders prepare today. The Newport Gazette presents many articles, listings, and notes in both English and German, as many of the King's troops were German-speaking Hessians. In August 1779, General Prescott issued a notice in the paper forbidding soldiers from stealing vegetables from fields and gardens to resell. This practice was embarrassing to the British command, and it appears that headquarters did make efforts to ensure food and goods were legally obtained. The British garrison would soon leave Newport in October 1779, as British focus turned toward the southern colonies. However, the garrison's time in Newport left a significant print record that provides an interesting glimpse into the provisioning of a long-term garrison during the American Revolution.